Hey guys, welcome to Talking TED Talks. Today we are talking the science of flirting and being a hot ape with TED speaker Gene Smith. Stay tuned. You're tuned in to AfterBuzz TV, the ESPN of TV talk. Now, let the buzz begin. Yo, what up, AfterBuzzers? Welcome back to another Talking TED Talks. Again, we are talking about the science of flirting and being a hot ape. Uh, the TED speaker was Jean Smith, a as she claims, a flirtologist. <laughs> I am your host, DJ Jesse J. Our host, Yasmin, she is joining us via <laughs> Skype. Hey, girl. Hi. What's I'm up? so Hi, sorry Jess. I can't be there. I'm really, really sad, but I just I can't be in that space because I don't want to want to make anybody ill. Um, but I still wanted to chime into the conversation, Jesse. This I have so much. I have so many questions about flirting, the science of flirting. <laughs> so I'm really excited about this. <laughs> well, I'm super happy because we brought in two of my friends and two people what? who I go to when I need advice. Oh yeah. Spicy has needed definitely. advice ever. <laughs> spicy got spicy has gotten a couple of my calls. Like, girl, we have spicy Mari in the building. Hi guys. Yeah, relationship expert. Hot. She helps singles and couples alike with uh, communication in a more passionate way with what the spicy life. Yeah, you know, she's been featured on Access Live, VH1's Basketball Wives. Oh, I remember now. Yeah. <laughs> BuzzFeed, The Ricky Lake Show, and iHeartRadio. Okay, look at you. Now. And Good Morning La La Land. I gotta, I gotta plug that too. Well, yeah. Speaking I'm of Good Morning La La Land, we <laughs> have uh, Sir Rob Mack. Oh, what? what? A what? happiness coach and author. I met you through uh, fam- VH1's yeah. Famously Single. You were one of the dating coaches That's right. there. Exactly. And then you came in and you helped. You did. You helped us, me yeah. and Tiana. Yeah. That, 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 that <laughs> Uh, you've been featured on shows like The Today Show, Good Morning America, Entertainment Tonight, and you are a national media spokesperson for a couple different brands yeah, we got. Huh? You know, you know, you gotta make those checks. Get those hey, checks. But you sharing follow, is caring. Hey, That's right. Exactly. And you gotta follow you on Instagram because he does these really cool live streams and from your car, oh, and they're super, like I say, I love relatability, and I just love you just turn the camera on, you know what I mean, and, and you speak to us. Dude, I so appreciate you. You're such an encourager. Mm-hmm. I mean that, man, like, for a while now like i'm like man you've always been like a great supporter uh, well i you appreciate do get it. i mean credits. i'm serious I right mean, like that's literally one of your spiritual gifts Jesse. it is thanks bro oh. yeah oh my god <laughs> <laughs> I get a check for that. <laughs> okay, uh, and then we have the TED speaker. Her name was Jean. Is Jean Smith? She is the founder of Flirtology. She is an author, a social and cultural anthropologist. Uh, she conducted an in-depth research into flirting and dating habits of 250 mm-hmm. people in London, Paris, New York, and Stockholm. She's written two books: The Flirt Interpreter, based on her initial research, and then Flirtology: Stop Swiping, Start Talking, and Find. Love, but I know you guys are sitting at home like, what the heck is this hot ape situation? Mm-hmm. <laughs> and it's actually the reason me and Yasmin picked this because it was so left field. Uh, you know, it's an acronym. And there's no apes involved, although there is this cool thing to find your hot ape versus finding a squirrel monkey. Right, that was a thing in the video. You're right. But is it weird? Now I know my problem is I think I'm I think I'm attracted to squirrel monkeys. They're so cute. <laughs> this is my issue. Yeah. We figured it out. Yeah. Right. They got no swag though, bro. Um, <laughs> here's the thing with Gene. Gene, I, I, you know, was. I'm not gonna lie. I was actually tuned in and entertained. There was a few questionable things. Uh, the Japanese man comment really threw me off. Uh, you know, with dating and saying that Japanese men can find their men through online virtual relationships with someone named Ginkgo. I was just like, whoa, girl, this is how we started. Yeah. This <laughs> <laughs> All right. Spidey gonna... senses went up right there. Yeah. <laughs> Swipe left on that one. Um, but no, she gets into a conversation and the first question she asks is, is this person flirting with me? And I got to ask both of you guys have obviously dealing in this realm. Mm-hmm. When did that question for you guys happen in your lives? Oh, personal life. Personal okay. life. And how did that spark your interest in wanting to help others figure that out. Wow, impression spice. Yeah. Okay, so for me flirting is a part of my everyday routine. I flirt with people as much as possible. Mm. I don't care what sex, what sexuality, 
I practice flirting nonstop because that's the only way that I can train you to be the best flirter possible that you can be. And so usually it's not people so much flirting with me as much as it is me flirting with them. (laughs) (laughs) That usually sends them this like come get it vibe because I want to know and exercise my power. And that's the only way that I can to empower other people to use theirs is by practicing. Because then I know, okay, what works and what doesn't. You had a little chingy. Yeah. Thur, right there, right there. <laughs> I've been flirting since I was little. I mean, you you know, my mom was married three times. I was going up to men like, I'll be a good little girl. You know, look at my mom. She's amazing. And, and you so, have such a... I would love your mom. <laughs> my mom is literally everything. I'm always trying to sell her, okay? <laughs> no, you don't need to. She sells herself. Uh, but the thing with you is that you do have that. You have this electric energy of about you, you know, and, you know, I think when we hear the word flirting, it's put in this box where it has to be this kind of sexualized or it's kind of put in this thing of like you only do it towards someone you're trying to get romantically right. or attain, but it's almost a tool and a power it is. to mm, use totally. to get anything you want. It life. is, absolutely. If I, my valet, I'm flirting with him, I'm like, mm-hmm. he's returning my car keys and I'm like, thank you, you pulled up the best ever. Like, I'm just, <laughs> it's, you have to practice it because one thing that Jean had even touched on was that, you know, she said, you know, be very intentional with your who you're flirting to. If you're someone though that isn't good at flirting, yep. how do you exercise a skill set that you don't have? And hot ape is a great acronym on the things that are important. But then how do you apply those tools? And so that's where the practice comes into play is, okay, practice, you know, being feminine, practice your communication, practice, you know, coming on without, you know, sending the signals, I want to go home with you. Well, yeah, how do you and how do you cut that off? Like, because there is a, a factor of flirting. And I, I, I would say I was actually pretty good at it with people the yeah. way you were saying it. But I feel like I kind of cut it off because it would almost kind of get me into situations oh. like, oh, I don't want to be here. Right. Oh my right. God, I'm so sorry. <laughs> this happened. I'm so sorry. <laughs> How um, do we end it back at your great, place? <laughs> a great way. So when, so it, 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 it can be mistaken as like, oh my God, this person really wants me. This is my chance. When really you're just practicing for the day. Yeah. But what you do is when they do flirt back or they do come on to you, you let them know, oh my gosh, if I wasn't in love with myself right now, you would totally be the person I'm in love with. Oh. Or if I wasn't in love with my husband, that's usually what I go to. I think I could fall in love with you. So just, you know, hold tight for me. You I'm never so know what in love happens with myself in life. Right now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Rob, for you. I love that. I, love, I couldn't agree with you more about that, though. The whole thing. Like, I think the best way to become really good at something really fast is to practice all the time with everybody, no matter what. No mm-hmm. exceptions. Yep. Like, no question, right? And I surprisingly do the, very much the same thing. I've always done the same thing, which is just practice, 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 just connecting with people, yeah. like expressing confident, uh, expressing myself confidently and just having fun with people. I think it's more about having fun mm-hmm. and really, um, for me, that's often shining the light on the things about them that I genuinely like. Yeah, it's been, You're I mean, giving you them affirmation. Yeah. I just yeah. a quick question here because I, I get the whole spectrum. You have to practice no matter what in life. A skill set is only only comes into fruition through practice. But then with that, do you practice on somebody that you are not so attracted to? Or do you only practice on somebody that you are attracted to? Everybody, cashier. Because everybody gets the flirt. It would be to mislead somebody through that practice. But I still want to practice. Like, I would still want to learn. So who do you practice on? Every, literally every body. Because the thing is, is when the person who you are really interested in comes along, that's when it gets a little nerve wracking and scary. And you're like, oh my God, oh my God, this is my chance to practice. Like you don't practice for the first time just on someone that you like. Mm. It becomes, you get, become desensitized to the rejection. To, to, to Jean's point, she was right as far as, you know, using this exercise as a tool and, you know, doing it as a game. But once you get desensitized from the rejection, you know, it becomes a softer landing when that person who you may really want to flirt with comes around. You've perfected the craft and the art. And if it didn't work with him or her, uh, you move on. Like she said, that was a great point. You move on to the next and you practice again and again. And if unfortunately someone is misled, it, this is a part of the dating game. Unfortunately, feelings will get hurt. That's that's a part of love. It's a part of the world we enter into because you're taking risks, whether it's finance, whether it's relationships, Play at your own risk, you know, enter at your own risk. And that's what you do when it comes to flirting as well. Yeah. And I'd say part of the challenge and opportunity with this conversation is that I think we probably have a little bit different definitions of like flirting, Mm -hmm. right? And I don't always. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. I don't always associate flirting with anything sexual at all. Like for me, it's not necessarily that. It's. And yet, it still fits within this acronym of like hot eight. Yeah. It's the humor and the open body language and the proximity and the touch. All that remains the same. I just don't go anywhere in terms of like, you know, um, sort of intimating 
physical intimacy. Mm. Right. And she did mention touch, though, as mm -hmm. as an element, which is, yes, that is like a clear sign. If someone's touching you, like they may be more interested, you know, than than the normal. But like when I first I, I, I walked in here, you know, I see Rob instantly and he gives me this beautiful smile. Right. He shines his pearly teeth at me. That could be mistaken as flirting, but yeah, what he's doing yeah. is practicing smiling because guess what? When he smiles, I smile back. And now Mirroring. I feel welcome. <laughs> yeah, now I yeah. feel welcome to strike conversation with him. Oh my God, it's so great to see you, you know? And then he follows up with affirmation. You look well. Like that can be mistaken as flirting, but what it is is making me feel good about myself and making me feel confident to continue on in the conversation, whether he wants my hot body or not. Now I feel confident to have this conversation with him. Well, and it's funny because, too, I feel like uh, one thing I've started to notice, and I'm sure this happens in the straight world, but specifically for me in the gay world, is, whoa, you got to be careful with being nice to people because <laughs> sometimes a lot of hurt people mm -hmm. take just kindness and nice being nice to them as flirting or being in oh, there yeah. totally and, uh, for sure i want to go yeah. through the i want to go through all realms it gets misinterpreted when you're yeah. too nice or too kind i feel yeah. like some people take it to the extreme of like oh this person's into me when it's like no i'm just being nice totally <laughs> yeah. and, and and you're absolutely right and i couldn't agree with you more and that's been a challenge for me and at the same time i'd always rather err on the side of being overly kind and yeah. friendly and yeah. loving than i would being you know cold yeah yeah because even with that rejection it's one of those things where i remember i got rejected by this person and but he was so nice about it mm -hmm. and it was just like I can't be mad like, <laughs> all right fine I'm but like you go. more yeah I was like I did it, truly yeah. and he's one of my greatest friends yeah. to this day uh, let's go down this hot ape H humor uh, this out of when I first watched it uh, months ago the number one thing I took from this was when she said if they don't make you laugh scratch them out they're already out and wow, like yeah. it's so simple to think like that, but I, I don't, you know, you, you know, it's like, no, but we connected. We had a deep conversation, mm -hmm. da, da, da. but there was no fun there. Not fun, but like, cause I can have fun on a more intimate, yeah. serious yeah. conversation, but humor wise, there, there are people it's like instantly when I'm around you guys, like it's, we're laughing. It's right. enjoyable. There are people that that instant kind of spark happens with, um, where does he, would you say humor is the number one thing to start with? So if we were to go in order, I would I, I, SPICY, self, passion, intimacy, communication, and learning to say yes, right? Mm -hmm. But the S in spicy, which most people don't know, is about self. Like that starts with, okay, who am I? What do I have to offer? What is it that I want? And so you knowing self first will let you know really how funny you are. And humor is extremely important. But if, you, but if we're following this rule and we're not humorous, how then do we get the date? So How can do we, we get change the humor to happiness? Oh, you I see. like that. Let's I like go. This is why I come in here. I like this is why I come in here right now. <laughs> Let them know, Jesse. I love that. Yeah, I mean, that's honestly what I feel most strongly about. Because I and I do love. I love the point around the humor. That being said, when you're just meeting someone, I always err in the direction of being overly kind and warm, and I don't do a whole lot of humor right away because mm -hmm. I don't know what their sense of humor is. Well, sure, because Gene oh. hit the Japanese joke, and that could have been Boom. an instant turn. -off. Exactly. Oh, yeah. yeah. That 100%. joke, I was like, wah, wah, wah. But, <laughs> yeah. uh, but the, her corny line that she did deliver, I think it was like some joke about a parking ticket or something oh, yeah, that yeah, she yeah. made. That was corny, right? <laughs> Maybe not everybody's cup of tea when it comes to humor. However... It was memorable. And so what she provided was something that I call spice breaker. So you may not be the funniest person, right? But what's your icebreaker? What's your go-to question that you ask that maybe will get their attention that can lead to humor just to kind of find out, you know, if you guys have any connection or chemistry? Because you can find humor in any conversation if you're open and free and willing to play. I'm the opposite of you. I don't start with kindness. I go right for the jugulars. There you go. She does. Yes. <laughs> when you, have you ever heard that term, get your heel off my neck? It's spicy. <laughs> but I get power it's from like my discomfort. It's actually balance each other out really well. <laughs> Right? That's Sweet fly. and spicy. <laughs> uh, next, we got to open body language. Um, I actually did something with you where we talked about that. You, you spoke about, you know, your body language. Open arms, shoulders facing. And then this time, the second time I had watched this was her talking about the foot direction. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Escaping the room. And I was like, oh, crap. <laughs> <laughs> what if they just bully? No, I'm just right, right. <laughs> How do you feel about uh, open that. body language, Rob? Oh, man. I mean, I think she makes a good point. And that being said, I mean, any of us who've read any of the pickup 
like guy stuff. Yep. I mean, most of them say, look, you could actually probably make more progress more quickly by doing the opposite of that, particularly if she's a really beautiful woman or a really great looking guy or whatever. And so, you know, I think we got to like sort of contextualize all of it and say that we've got to calibrate and recalibrate based on the context and the situation and the individual. That being said, um, open body language definitely is going to indicate that they probably are more interested in you than they are some of the other mm -hmm. people in the room. Mm -hmm. um, but I have seen the opposite work just as well, if not better. When you have a closed body language, you look away. It's like a whole thing. You're not giving them attention, making yeah, them chase 100%. you. Yeah, 100%. It's a whole, yeah, it's a whole, it's I a have dance. A, I have a There's a psychology question. behind so, it. Sorry, because right. I don't know if I'm lagging or anything. Um, because I know both of you have, you've, you've got great background and studies, like Rob, you've studied, you've got a master's in uh, applied positive psychology, which is like really rare. I don't even know what that is, but it sounds <laughs> amazing. I'm, and, uh, I'm still trying to figure it out and, myself. And like, <laughs> when does this student like, From what I've read, it's a, an Ivy League degree held by only a few dozen people in the world. And then Spicy yourself, you've you've got a dating coach certificate from the International Dating Coach Association. So I wonder, from what she's saying about body language and and feet direction and everything, do you have you two from your studies? Do you pick out on those things? Like, does that start to kind of go into your minds? Like, oh, I see this person like moving like this, or I should be moving like this, or do you just kind of naturally let it flow? Because the way Jean is like explaining it, this is a practice. Apply the hot ape. And are you conscious of it yourself based oh, on your studies? I love this question. Go you ahead. Air that? Okay, so I, this is like phenomenal because it hits at a number of sort of challenges that I mean, issues <laughs> I've had with the video itself. Like I think it's great. I love what she does and I love who she is. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, it feels very scripted, <laughs> right? And oh, it's very scripted. You, you know, and, and, and it's not a surprise because lots of us get into the, our professions because we struggle with the very thing that we're now teaching, yep. right? And so I... Again, love her. That being said, I would say that in the beginning, you know, I was studying like a lot of neurolinguistic programming and all that stuff is about mirroring and matching and you reflect back and all this whole thing. And in the beginning, you're, you know, all of NLP was is basically developed and built on what people do authentically and naturally and automatically mm -hmm. already. Micro right? and macro. That's exactly yeah. right, right? And so when you struggle with that and you can go to the science and you apply the science and you can do it in sort of a methodical way, but over time, you want it to just be organic and automatic and natural. And for me, I don't think about any of it anymore. Yeah, I don't try to think natural. about any. I'm not trying to manipulate anyone. I'm trying to persuade anybody. I'm just being me and I'm doing what feels right and natural to me. Not everybody might resonate with that but that's my experience it's a fluid experience and i just do it kind of makes me feel good and i want to make sure that the other person feels safe and all that uh -huh. so yes and uh it's yeah. everything that Rob said I love, I love the end. <laughs> it naturally to me as well because i mean we live in this profession we you know live and breathe doing what we do and so i naturally flirt i do however pay attention to people's body language totally. because if there's something that I want in this moment or no matter what it is, even if it's um, this Diet Coke that you brought me, I am paying attention to your response to me because that does direct me and how to respond to you. And if you have a wall up, my instant go to is how do I break that wall down? So to her point of like body language being forward to you, if the person is not paying attention to you, does it, that doesn't mean that you can you should strike out and go home. Totally. If anything, okay, how do we get this person to lean into us? How do we get this person's feet to face us? How do we get this person to open up? If someone is closed off to you, don't be afraid to ask them why. Don't be afraid to you know pull out you know bust out the elephant in the room and say, oh my gosh, you see I'm over here flirting with you. You're not giving me any signals back. Like what is going on? That's uncomfortable for a lot of people to say the truth. But it actually works in your favor because now you have them talking. Maybe they're explaining. They may end up giving you a nice response. But if they say, I'm just not that into you, then you know, okay, like move on. But I don't think you just give up just because the person's not directly facing you. Feet, you know, lean in. Agree. What if they're an extreme introvert and they're conservative, well, but they the still can be your so husband? You're saying the spice maker or spice breaker effect. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I feel like a, a lot of the times, like I've even heard this from someone, like, "Oh, well, normally, Jesse, I would think this, but you always sit like that." Like I've heard that about me mm -hmm. myself because I, when I'm comfortable. With somebody, I'm sitting there. My legs are cropped. My legs are up. I'm sitting up on the table like this. Like I'm engaged. I, my, my I don't really have open body language unless I'm up and I'm. Yeah. So I think it, it is really 
kind of one of those things where it's like you have to get to know, get inside the person's mind before you start analyzing things. Someone might have a, you know, a trigger in their eye. I know I have a, one eye blinks slower than the other one. <laughs> <laughs> and so I mean, it ain't a wink, okay? You know? So I think paying attention, like not overanalyzing that too much. And I think we overanalyze oftentimes. We get paid to overanalyze. You guys yeah. should not be overanalyzing. Yeah. It, it, it's such a good this point. This is why you get Spicy's number, you give her a yeah. concept. Okay, here's what happened. Hundred <laughs> percent, right? I love that. I love what you said there. Couldn't agree with you more. Yet, you know, I used to keep my arms folded across my stomach because I had stomach I had digestive issues and my stomach hurt a lot. And um, I'm sure people read that as closed body language, mm. but I was probably very much interested in the conversation, or at least attempting to be. And um, so I do agree with you. And part of the challenge. And the opportunity with this particular video and the whole science of flirting is that we're trying to teach people emotional regulation, yeah. emotional intelligence, and cognitive agility, and all these things that, particularly the emotional intelligence piece, all these things that are really, really, really difficult to teach, yeah. right? You can script it out, you can have your little to-do list, and you can try to do all of it, but at the end of the day, you walk away and say, that just something didn't feel right. They said all the right things, they did all the right things, but I didn't feel like I really connected. And you say, well, why is that? It's because it wasn't coming from the same place with that person as it was from maybe Spicy, mm -hmm. or somebody who's, you know, no, has a lot of emotional intelligence. Now, going from uh, more of communicative to <laughs> touching, T, we have <laughs> touch. Um, you know, she said that this is probably one of the most important ones that having that physical touch heightens everything to a whole nother level. Um, which, again, I think it's that, that murky water mm -hmm. because I know a lot of people who are very touchy. And yeah. some people are uncomfortable with in, initial touching and things like that. Uh, but I do. I, I, in conversations, it's like, oh, girl, what? You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> but in it, there is a sense of like, okay, now we're connected. We're, with touching, how uh, would, you, would you say there's a, the boundary of respecting and also kind of figuring out when that is okay? To Jean's point on touch, because I am, when it comes to touch that does give you a signal of oh okay it's a, it's another level of intimacy and body language that expresses non verbally i'm interested by the subtleties but for people who are uncomfortable with the touch once you practice these small little moves and the person's not being responsive to it you should be paying attention to that if you were if you're trying to mirror this you know hot ape be responsive to that because some people are very closed off they don't want to be touched they're very big on space but I do think that you do need to give a little bit to receive. Yeah. And so I do think you should break that, break that boundary. I make people very uncomfortable the moment I meet, um, meet them because I always hug. I don't care if you have boundaries. I'm going to hug you anyways yeah. because how can I break your wall and control the situation? So some of it comes from this place of like, <laughs> I like to be in power. And now that I've made you uncomfortable, that puts me more in power. But when it Rot comes wild. to... <laughs> right, <laughs> yeah. rah, rah, you're going to love me. <laughs> but take the uncomfort, you know, take the discomfort away from it by, you know, touch. See what, that's the only way to learn what someone's boundaries are is by actually practicing mm. it. And that actually points to, I think, a really profound principle, which is just this sort of reciprocity, right? Like if you're doing something and you're doing it kind of, you know, over and over again, and you're not getting it reciprocated, it's a good sign they're probably not interested. Yeah. That or, and then there's another point that I think you highlighted here, which is just beautiful, which is that like, it all comes back to love languages, I think in some ways. Yeah. And I think one of the greatest questions you can ask someone, you can find ways to ask so it doesn't sound or feel uncomfortable or inauthentic, but it's like, how do you know when somebody likes you? How do you know? Mm -hmm. Because for me, it, it is physical touch. It's affection and words of affirmation. For other people, it might not be that at all. Yeah. Yeah. You know, they don't want to be touched. They might even be on the spectrum. If yeah. you, don't, you know, if, And so it's important to like find a way to get that question answered. And you can get it answered by either just noticing the actions that they reciprocate or not, or asking them. Yeah. Next we great, come great to point. A, attention. Mm. And she gave her a little shindig and I just wrote, pay it. <laughs> pay it. That's what I got. That's what I got pay from it. all of it. Pay it. Hashtag, Hashtag pay, pay attention. It. Okay. Uh, <laughs> you know, I, I think it almost is repetitive at this point because now we've already gotten hot. You know, so to now we're attention. Well, I hope you were. Yeah. I hope that's what we've been doing this whole time yeah. when I'm paying attention to your body language, totally. when I'm paying attention to your humor, your happiness, the you know your open body language. I think with attention, she should have got a step further. So yes, pay attention, but even more importantly, pretend to care. Mm -hmm. People want to feel as if you are extremely engaged, right, with what they're saying. But how do we test that? 
well, are they asking me questions and responding to what I'm saying, or are they just waiting for the next topic to come up and Ooh. their turn to speak? Yasmin, pa- the pause. Yes. <laughs> no, <we're> t- <laughs> yes. Wait, what? Pregnant Did pause? I pause? No, no, no. Remember when, uh, you, as she just said, like giving that pause instead of looking for your, okay, yeah, how am I going? That mo- giving that moment. Don't yeah. rush in there. Yeah. That's everything. And I agree with you. Observation, yes. I don't, exactly. I'd almost call that just presence. Like I think sometimes we work too hard yeah. at trying to get people to like us or getting them to feel like we're flirting. You know, we can work too hard at it. And sometimes the best thing you could possibly do is just sit there, listen, not just wait to speak. Right. Listen and listen with a very quiet, cool, composed mind. And extend on it too. Listening. A lot of times, <laughs> Robin, yeah. listen, just listen to what they're saying. Yeah. And then instead of responding, Ask yeah. exactly. Pull out, pull the conversation deeper, and that like you see, oof, you want to open the most someone up. Basic, yes. 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 Ask them they more say, about ask themselves. Them more. <laughs> yes, exactly, exactly. <laughs> Proximity. What did you guys take from the, the the word of proximity? She used this club. She was at, a, at the club and seeing how somebody kept moving towards her yeah. closer. Uh, Based on our proximity right now, yeah. Spicy is definitely feeling me. Oh, yeah. Based on our proximity, I'm in love. Space is important, though. I, so, because you do want to get closer, of course, to the person who you're trying to approach and build this relationship out of thin air with. But if you're not recognizing that the person on the opposite side of the room is like the one they've always been the one what is your proximity like there's no way to actually practice the spacing unless you notice that person yeah but i do think that and as women this is something that i constantly tell women do not wait for him to come up to you because he may not have saw you go (laughs) up to him Close that space, close that gap, and just speak to him. Like, start a conversation with him. That alone is flirting. If a woman goes up to a man, automatically, she wants me. Like, this is how men, <laughs> it's a lot easier for women than it is, you know, for men because they're constantly used to rejection. Yeah. Mm. But that doesn't mean for you guys to give up, but especially for women. Like, close that gap. Go up to men and talk to them. Rob, the- What would you advise, though, for a woman then to go up to a man? Because, yes, men do it often, and they face rejection so often, but women still fear <laughs> it because they they still don't, let's say, have that courage to face rejection in a sense. Right. So w- what would you say in, in that sort of scenario? So I would say have some spice breakers in hand, right? These are like the questions that you would have in your back pocket uh, what's your, you know, you could have any superpower in the world, what would it be? But that's not your intro, right? You have that in the back pocket for conversation because you're trying to figure out stuff to talk about. When you go up to a man, because I want you to practice this too. Here go we go, yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you got homework. You see something you want, you go and get it, okay? Go up to him and ask him, can I tell you a secret? Everybody wants to know a secret. Who's going to say no? Like, who? unless you see a ring on his finger, he's not going to say no. He's going to say yes. I don't know why, but I was drawn to you. Do you have a do you have a moment to you know talk you know? Oh, so like, cute! I'd blush. Yes, like, <laughs> I was drawn to you. Now you just <laughs> told him why you closed that gap and came up to him. But then just coming up to him alone is a signal of interest. But you telling him, you know, can I tell you a secret? It's showing vulnerability, and then also too, he's gonna you know he's gonna intrigue you with somewhat of a conversation. Like if he doesn't want you. He'll let you know because he just won't engage. But always start with, can I tell you a secret? And then go into, you know, I'm interested in you or I find you attractive. Don't be afraid to ask him back. Do you find me attractive? Have you ever seen the movie Hitch? Yeah. It works wonders. Ask someone if they're attracted to you or would they be interested in getting to know you? You know, I have to go. My girls are running out. But we should exchange info. I promise I'm an interesting person. I got to go. Bye. Yo, for real, Spicy, Ooh. you're saving people like years. Yeah, I'm serious. <laughs> like decades of like, I'm serious. <laughs> because that, you're 100% right about that. And I think just, you know, from a guy's perspective, like, I've never felt that a woman was too close. Like, like that's never a problem. Yeah. When she comes close, I just, I instantly like, oh, maybe she's interested. And then to sit in that space, even though it might feel just, you know, a little uncomfortable, just reaffirms that for me. Mm. Yeah. And then, you know, you can back up if it, you know, you don't need to stay there, you know, smell my breath. The whole and, but then sometimes <laughs> it builds the confidence yeah. up in a man to be like, all right, exactly. right. let's play right. ball. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> now, that's funny. We wrapped it up with E, eye contact. Uh, and again, I think this is just in life. I think this is important. I think technology has kind of geared us away from it and mm-hmm. made it uncomfortable to sit and stare somebody in the eyes. Um I think probably one of the most important things because eye contact or it could be engaging. Oh, I love that. Yeah. Um, eye contact is yeah, huge. It's yeah, yeah. Like, that's very important. 
Once again, though, gonna, I'm going to keep doing no, this. Gene, I don't, Gene, there is tons of love for you on this TED Talk. I'm probably going to bring you on, you know, one of my podcasts. But I have to say, what? Once again, what if the person doesn't see you? So, yes, right. eye contact does let me know, okay, we're having a moment or we're sharing something right now. Eye contact, no matter what it is, during conversation or making love, it's very intimate, right? right? Staring someone in the eyes is very intimate. But... If you look away and we try Rob's approach of like this playing hard to get and, you know, yeah. oh, I don't see you, but, you know, I do want you. That also. Like being coy. Like right. sometimes yeah. that is right. attractive. Yeah. Right. There is that yeah. element too of, of like not staring them down and, you know, making them feel like. Because you, know, you guys ever felt awkward with somebody like staring you too much? You? Like, yes. Okay. <laughs> we have like a five minute conversation. Can you, look, can you look at the wall or blink? <laughs> well, <laughs> Jesse, you are easy on the eyes, brother. So, you know. <laughs> You can't really blame for that. You know, yeah, just receive that. <laughs> I will receive. Just go ahead and receive that. Yes, take uh, that, take well, that. Okay, so we got to switch because we got to wrap up. But I want to go to Yasmin. So every week we do our Teddy's talk. We reach out to our fans, our Teddies. Uh, Yasmin, do you have some of our uh, numbers and some of our questions? Because I can imagine I these mean, responses. Okay, so our first question was, what's your favorite flirty pickup line? And there were a couple. And one of them was, what's good with you? Which... I don't know if that's a great one, but hey, that was somebody's favorite one. The other one was, which I thought was hilarious, um, is the Wi-Fi on? Because I'm feeling a connection here. Oh. Uh, wow. <laughs> that's I, like the first I would one. remember the Wi-Fi one. I actually. want to know from each of you now what's your favorite, <laughs> or, or Rob and Spicy. Well, also Jesse, if you have a favorite pickup pick line or something Ooh. that you use. Um, I, let me think. A pay, favorite yeah, pickup line. Or, a move, I pick- or it's just a move or something. Okay. Uh, favorite pickup line. I usually start off, if I, if I just want to hold the conversation, right? I'm usually just going to start off with, tell me the high and low of your day. Oh, I love it. Or I'll ask you, you know, will you be my friend? I like that second. I like that the high or low of the day second, but I loved your first one. I got a secret to tell oh, you. Oh, well, the yes, secret. Right? Right? Yes, right? I already used it. I like oh, that. Oh, because like, you'd be like, what? I'm engaged. I'm engaged. I'm engaged. I want to listen. Yeah. Oh, no. I, I, let me tell you, I'm about to have a lot of secrets this weekend. <laughs> <laughs> I gave you the secret already because that's why I was like, okay, let me give a different one. High and low of the day or, you know, the, what's the other one I just said right now? Um, what's uh, high and low of the day? And then I just said one more. I'm having a brain fart. High and low of the day. Can I tell you a secret? Uh, I can't remember the other one I just I mean, said. that's plenty. <laughs> that point, you already what's the I'm worst like, pickup line that. you've ever heard? The worst one? Or you've oh. used? <laughs> Man, it, I, oh, I don't use any pickup lines ever. Okay. I, I, and I never have because I've never felt like I could pull them off. Because, you know, I'm just not a good actor. You know what I'm saying? So, like, if I if it's I don't feel something, I can't guy. say it. Yeah, I mean. Even though you've acted in so many roles, you must be great yeah, somehow. Yeah, yeah, it, it was a very confusing part of my life. <laughs> really trying to find myself. <laughs> yeah, and I appreciate that. But, yeah, it's, um, I, you know, to be honest with you, one of the greatest pickup lines that I like for me is I will simply ask a woman what her favorite book is. I know it's boring. Or I'll ask her if she's oh, happy. That's good. You know, or, I've, you know, when are you happiest during mm. the day? It doesn't feel like a lot, when but for me happiest? it's big. Because if, like, I will... I can feel whether or not she's serious about that. And the other thing is I can tell whether or not she's genuinely happy. Yeah. And I'm only really interested in people that either really want to be happy yep. or are happy. I love that one. Uh, yeah. To your point about, like, are they genuinely happy? I'll I'll hit that with a, what are you passionate about? Oh, I love that. That's because even better. Yeah. Then they get to tell you yeah. what they do for a living, too. Are you in yeah. your um, purpose? Or, you know, <laughs> like, it, yeah. at some point they will start to talk about their career or, you know, their hobbies. So you're getting, like, two for the price of one. Yeah. And you're fi- really yeah. figuring yeah. it So you're getting out. to know them more genuinely. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. I know we got to wrap this up very quickly. So, uh, worst pickup line. We already discussed that. Have you ever been told it's not you, it's me? Um, oh my gosh. Yeah. Sixty-four <laughs> percent say. Or no, not have you ever been told, but more like have you used the line? It's not you, it's me. Sixty-four percent say yes, and um, thirty-six say no. So, oh. a lot of people seem to be using it. And then, are you a great flirt, or do you need more practice? And seventy. Five percent said they're a great flirt, huh. which I'm not sure. It's, you know what we call that? It's the Dunning Kruger effect. I mean, a lot of people seem to think they are great flirts out there. Yeah, the Dunning Kruger effect is basically the belief that you're good at things that you're not. Yeah. Mm. Okay, and and most of us have, have that. that. <laughs> yeah, in some ways or the other. But I would say that the one thing that we do know is that people are actually much worse 
at flirting and mm-hmm. they're much worse at connecting and they're much worse at paying attention and so the likelihood of people being you know 70% of people being, I don't believe that at no. all <laughs> no. where's the flirting happening you do don't you, see it right do you know how many people tell me that they're an amazing date I'm like well how many dates have you been on 10 you're trust me you're not an amazing date like that too is something that you have to practice and we need more of your personality That's right 10,000 10,000 hours so we, right. have to, <laughs> we have to wrap but I love you guys and I thank you and we're going to do another one we need to get you guys back in here for a full I negative, would love full that and I hope I'd be in studio for that next time yes. as well because you guys sound so fun <laughs> you guys are amazing yes thank you. phenomenal truly amazing he's flirting with you right you. now yeah right now <laughs> practicing I told you I'm practicing I'm flirting through the Skype here right now with you guys I feel now, it <laughs> how can we follow you and what, what, what are we paying attention to right now what are we working on you guys are playing with my Twitter or stroking my Instagram at Spicy Mari and going to thespicylife.com yeah see when she says she practices she does <laughs> <laughs> you can check me out on all social media platforms at Rob Mac M-A-C-K official you can also check me and Spicy's already done an interview Jess is coming on Yasmin is coming on at Good Morning La La Land that's 9 to 10 a.m. Pacific time on all social media platforms hey Yasmin and you can find me at Yasmin Tanres. And how about you, Jesse? Boom. You guys can hit me up everywhere at DJ Jesse J. And also make sure you guys hit us up across all social media platforms at Talking TED Talks and at AfterBuzz TV. Till hey. next week. Peace. Our okay. founder, Kevin Undergaro, and me, Maria Menunos, would like to thank you for tuning in to AfterBuzz TV. Remember, we're not just the first, we're the biggest in the world, and we're the only destination for all your favorite TV shows. Whatever you crave, we've got it. So go to AfterBuzzTV.com and check out our lineup. Buzz you later. <laughs> the views expressed herein are those of the host only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals. 